Today we're going to be dealing with a little bit of the psychology because I was a little bit concerned last week with a bunch of guys who were saying that uh, they're worried about taking trades, they don't have the discipline to, to trade, um, they worried about taking losses. And I think a good starting point when it comes to trading is the actual dedication to sitting down and actually trading, right? Show me some love, show me some emojis or interaction. I wanna see uh, if, if you can hear me and how things are going. All right, cool, thanks. As you know, this is a discussion event, so I do like to hear your input. And uh, I do two videos. One is the actual event, uh, and then the other one is the breakup of the most important points. So my question to you is what is motivation as a trader? Your reason for doing what you do. Okay. It keeps you going even if you have any losing trades, you still get up and carry on. Cool, good. John? I think you've got to enjoy what you're doing. Because if money is your motivation, you won't make it. Yes, very true. Okay, so I will use a definition that I have. And it says here, the act or process of giving someone a reason for doing something. So the thing is, most people start or create a new habit or hobby with the form of motivation, right? So you need motivation, for example, to keep to a healthy diet. You need motivation to read books every single day. You need motivation to go to gym or play sports, right? And you definitely need motivation to do laundry. <laughs> and most people, when it comes to trading, need motivation to trade. They need motivation to sit down and actually take the trades or learn how to trade. So what is the problem with motivation? Uh, I'm trying to think how it's a problem. I, th I see it as a good thing. Okay. Um, John? Well, I look at New Year's res uh, revolution, uh, resolutions and people are motivated, like you say, to go to the gym or change their diet and it just runs out at the correct <laughs> you know the first month they, it's finished correct <laughs> uh. so i feel motivation encapsulates the motive which is said very very nicely in greek and in greek we say metozori and metozori it's difficult to translate because it's not a direct translation but metozori is another way to say uh with strain and struggle right Motivation can work for short periods of time, but most likely will be a doubtful challenge in the future. So, John, if you have my MultiTrader system program, uh, Martin, uh, I don't know if you might consider it, yep. you will know that I absolutely hate the word motivation. I hate it. Yeah. It does nothing for me. If I needed motivation to trade, I would have quit many many years ago i would have gone to an event and had the motivation for that day and then the next day i would have found the next best thing and i just hate the word motivation because it's never actually brought uh, future success or um, achievements in the long run so i removed the word motivation i removed it from my vocabulary and from my life okay and before I go to the next slide, I would like to tell you the word that I use instead of motivation, and that is integration. Integration is what you need as a successful trader and as uh, if you have a hobby or something to do in your life that you want to achieve with certainty. You need to remove motivation from your life and implement integration. All right, so before I go into that, Martin, what would you believe integration is? Adding something. Adding something, okay. That, something that uh, merges with what you've already got. Cool, very cool. Nice one. John? 
I suppose integration is like making it a habit. It's the same as doing your, well, coming here tonight. It's it's you integrating it into your life. Well, for some people, some people habit. they need motivation to come uh. to this event. Some people need the marketing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, to say, oh, it's six o'clock. I might as well. Should I go? What is the reason? Maybe I'll skip this one. That's motivation to then think about why you would uh. go to an event. Integration is where you've automatically made it a part of your daily life without any struggle and without any motivation. So I actually have a, a formula for integration and that is discipline plus passion plus determination. So you don't need motivation from your friends. You don't need it from the voice inside your head. You don't need it from colleagues. You've just integrated the actions into your life. For example, You've integrated watching TV and Netflix. You don't say, oh, I really, you know, I should watch Netflix, but I, I don't feel like it today. If you want to watch Netflix, you're going to do it. <laughs> You've integrated that. Music. You probably integrated listening to music into your life. Brushing your teeth. Maybe having a braai or, you know, eating foods in general. You've integrated. You don't think about these things. There is no motive. There is no motivation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh. So why I'm saying this is because you need to learn to be a successful trader for the long term. You need to have integrated it into your life. John, what do you integrate into your life? Well, I've integrated doing gym at five in the morning. So... Uh, and I've integrated the trading, but parts of the trading I'm still trying to make a habit. So I write it down, and you know, for the next month I want to check my stocks at say maybe every couple of hours or something or whatever. So uh, there's a lot of stuff to integrate, but one one step at a time. Okay. And what do you believe it will take to integrate into your trading? without thinking about it yeah oh, that's a good question it's uh, i don't know okay that, yeah, Let, that's let's a good let, question let's ask me. the next question uh -huh. what about this what time do you find is best for trading okay that's an easy one to answer because I basically the work that i do is not i don't do um well especially with this COVID at the moment it's not really there's not much to do so I can sort of trade all day long if I want to, but it's, um, I think when things get back to normal, that's going to be a bit of a challenge to, I'd have to do it mostly early in the morning, do my analysis and, and in, the, in the evening, okay. you know, take out Netflix a bit, like you say. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, it, uh, then, then, okay, so the most important thing when you're integrating trading into your life is if you're sitting down because you're, you've chosen a time or um, a day to do it and you don't want to do it, then ask the questions. So, so my question was, how would you integrate trading into your life so that it's second nature and a habit rather than motivation <coughs> with struggle? Well, I think the greatest incentive is the amount of return one is making. So if you see it as an opportunity to make money, you integrate a daily, a daily routine of looking at your trades, making sure your trades are on track. If they're not on track, go back, go back to the drawing board and see why aren't they on track. I mean, there's a lot at stake here if you're investing hard-earned money. Uh, for the purposes of making passive money, because it is passive money, uh, you need to be on top of it. So it's like a, going to the gym every day, a look at your trades in order to keep your financial portfolio healthy. I, I'm going to agree and disagree with certain parts. The first thing I'm going to agree is that on a daily basis, yes, you do need to find a time that you integrate into your trading. With regards to the performance, uh, as of last week, I said that there are 
many months that you can expect losing months as long as the, the performance and the returns are high. And you need to integrate the winning and losing parts into trading in a way that it does not discourage you from uh, halting your trades. So I'll give you an example. Integration kicked into my life in 2011 and I started trading in 2003. Now that's a long time to integrate trading, right? So from 2003 to 2011, it became a challenge to find that integration aspect where the personality aligned with the type of trading. In 2011, I actually had a losing year. It was the last time I had a losing year. And most people would have quit trading, said it was a joke, would have gone to the drawing board in the system. But I saw from the system that there were times where I wasn't going, I wasn't following it perfectly and I thought I knew better. And I had a motivation to beat the system. And when you have motivation, you are trying to incorporate human centricity and ego into your trading, right? So the integration aspect is asking yourself when do I do this in a way that I don't need motivation to make me do it? For example, you don't see me saying, I'm going to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and look at Forex and look at the charts and read all the prices. If that was the case, I'll quit trading. You want to try and incorporate it to your own personality. So when do I do analysis? I like doing an analysis at 12 o'clock p.m., not 7 o'clock, not when the market's open. I used to be like that. Not when Japanese opens or America. 12 p.m. Why? Because that's when I feel um, more awake, more astute. It works for some. It doesn't work for others. John works at 5 o'clock in the morning. If I did that, I would not be standing here. I would say trading is the hardest thing on earth. <laughs> so it's finding yourself. Martin, sorry, uh, I've been rambling. How do you integrate trading into your life? Because you've been a trader for 15 years. Yeah, it, for me, that would be a difficult one to answer. It's something that I've been doing for so long. It's not something I have to start doing. It's the other way around for me. If I wasn't trading, then I'd have to scratch my head and say, well, what would I do instead? So have you noticed that, that you have integrated trading into your life without motivation? Yes, yeah, so I suppose you could say that. If, if I can, like give you an idea on how I've integrated trading into my life, I will label it in terms of steps. So the first thing is I make coffee. You will never ever see me trading without a cup of coffee next to me. I've not done that in years. It's funny, but it works. So maybe you want to, um, who's a John, maybe you want to have a protein shake when you're doing your trading or a tea or water, whatever. Something as simple as that action is uh, could integrate the aspect. So coffee, when I see coffee, I say, okay, now I'm ready to trade. Do you see that? Then open my trading and charting platform. I look at the main indices first. So I always look at, before I go to the stocks, which is gonna make me feel uncomfortable, what is the index doing, the main index? So with the JSC top 40 index, what is it doing? Is it going up, is it going down? Because it prepares me psychologically for where the stocks are more likely to head, yeah. okay? Then I uh, go to the stocks and I go through my watch list of the JSC Top 40 and the S&P and Dow and all that, and I analyze my charts using the MultiTrader system. Then the charts line up, I grab it. I take the trade. This is all integration. There is no it's my birthday, I really don't feel like trading, I'm gonna take a loss today. Or um, I made a profit yesterday, so I'm not gonna trade today. Or I'm on a losing streak of 10 losing trades in a row, I'm not gonna take this one because I'm just gonna lose. Do you see how, as soon as you give reason and motive against a proven strategy, you've already lost the game. Because when you go against the system once, You've set a precedent for doing it in the future and, and uh, doing it with greater extents. For example, I'm going to take profits here because I want to lock a profit. Next time, the profit's going to be lower and lower and lower. 
because you are now introducing speculation rather than an analytical approach to your trading. So then once I've taken the trade, then I move to the next stock or the next index and then that's it. And when do I do this? Maybe once every two, three days. I don't even do this every day. I'm a trader of 19 years now and I don't even look at the markets every day. It's just what works for you. I do my analysis first thing, place the trade and I'll sit there till it's played out usually. Okay. Oh, so so for, for you, it's more about the time spent looking at the charts. Yeah. Okay. I'm watching it in case I get some signal that says get out now. It's not going the way you thought. I don't usually trust it to do what I hope it's going to do. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think what I find interesting is a lot of older traders spend less time at the, <laughs> at the charts than the, the ones that start out. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, because I, yeah. there's a lot of books I've read as well. They they say the same thing as you. They started off looking at the charts a lot, and then they slowed down. And they, I think that's one thing that I take home is eventually I'll get to the stage of doing less trading for more. There is no right and wrong. It's all about what you feel is comfortable. Because if I was in a group yeah. of say 200 forex traders intraday traders and i told them the way i traded i would probably be the only one in the room that doesn't know what he's talking about because nobody trades the way <laughs> i do it where they say you only look at the markets two three times a, a week and you only take a trade in 10 minutes when they're spending hours and they got to look at all of the markets and stock exchanges that are open but it works for me which means mm. that I don't need the motivation, nor I don't need the confirmation from external influences to know that I'm to to know that um, that I know what I'm doing. Yeah. So when you yeah. so when you go into those uh, forex trader groups and all the groups, what do you see? Should I take the trade? I took this trade. What do you think? Um, what is the best system out there? Do you see how they're trying to link into confirmation on external influences to base their own success? And I don't know any trader in this world who has ever made a success of leeching off other um, investors and traders' methodologies. Right? Yeah. But then you say, what about the premium multi-trader service? Well, listen, if like, if you are following every single thing that I, I send out in terms of my trade ideas and you're making a profit, it's, it's, you're just following the, the way that I'm doing it. But when other people ask for other people's opinions, the only way that they can be successful is if they follow every single trading signal that they send out on a weekly basis not once off so it's flawed yeah, to ask I, the question uh, uh, is this trade correct should i take this trade what do you think about this trade it's flawed yeah i i basically belong to um forexsignals.com and they they got three guys on there and they're pretty good and a lot of the times when i listen to them the first thing that they say to the guys especially the new ones you can follow the signals that are on here because that's all the people want is the signals and he says you can follow the signals but if you don't understand the way i'm trading you're wasting your time you'd rather go to the um because i got a little section for for education they said rather go and educate yourself first and i would say every day they're saying the same thing <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Don't follow my signals. It's not going to make you rich. Uh, exactly. Or, or follow the signals as your education and implementation to compare your own trading strategy. So at least you have something of a form yeah. of security while you are working on your own strategy in the meantime. Because the thing is, like, if someone follows my signals, or I don't like saying signals, I like saying trade ideas because I don't tell people what to do. But when I send out my trade ideas... 
And then they say, Tim, when I've added a Fibonacci to the analysis, uh, is this going to work? I, was, I don't know, you know, and it might even do better or it might do worse, but it is out of my hands because now you've mm. added a, another variable into an already complicated back-tested system and to backtest with the Fibonacci on a normal breakout system requires a lot of mathematics and a lot of time to, to see if, if, if it's successful or not. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. If you're a mechanical trader and you take emotions totally out of the trading, uh, I think that relieves a lot of the stress that you've been talking about. I think a lot of people go in there and start looking at the chart and try and analyzing it at its face value and that doesn't work so i mean i've been trading for 50 years now and i thoroughly trust a mechanical system uh, i know that i'm going to get 65 to 70 percent of my hits are going to be accurate so on a daily routine i go in i look at my trades if my trades are not performing according to the charts that we had predicted, I go back and see that I make a mistake. But otherwise, I'm calm, I'm relaxed. Uh, if uh, the markets are down and my shares have dropped or my futures have dropped uh, and it coincides with uh, the predictions, I'm not phased at all. Okay, so uh, a few things that Sam has said. 50 years of being in the markets, Sam, subconsciously you have overcome a lot of the issues that newbie and even intimate traders have experienced. Because when you say you go through the bad times and you keep calm, that took a lot of different a adaptation and integration into your life to reach that level. The only way for a newbie to trade a mechanical system calmly without any effect is to do it via a robot or an expert advisor which automatically takes the trades because pulling that trigger knowing that you can take a loss or make a gain and you experience some form of emotions um, means that you are not ready to trade the system once you've reached the level of consistency and content and integration that's when trading becomes repetitive, calm, and nothing really becomes new. Um, firstly, I'd just like to say I agree with what Sam was saying. As long as you've stuck to your system, even if you haven't traded, as long as you trade well, like you, you put in your emails, trade well. As long as you've stuck to your rules, you've done the right thing, even if your trade didn't win. Yeah, and uh, in the morning, my normal routine is uh, prayers first, cup of tea upstairs to the computer sometimes well quite often really i i'm so eager to trade i have breakfast later so your cup of tea do you see how that's become into the integration aspect of trading yeah something so silly and yet so significant to your success is a cup of tea <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, be aware of these things, of what motivates you and then what you've already integrated into your life, that you have the discipline and determination and then go with it. Be conscious with the decisions that you make on a, uh, on a psychological level. Yeah, I'm always eager to get the charts switched on and go through, them, go through all the currency pairs and see if I can see my setup. And especially if you're trading like stocks and indices, you know, market makers and brokers are always trying to incorporate new markets and financial markets into your trading regime. So when, for example, the Brazilian um, stock market becomes available in South Africa, I'm going to jump on that because it works perfectly with the system. But right now it's all about availability. So, you know, the system doesn't change. The money management rules don't change your feelings towards how the markets react don't change but the new instruments the new financial markets um, and the new availability and accessibility is going to continuously change which is going to keep us going and keep us excited because as 
one of my my mentors said igor um he said your best trade is still to come and your worst trade is also still to come and uh, i take that to heart you know because it you, you with the changing in the algorithms and the changing in the the markets there's always going to be uh new results to the system that you have that is going to look completely different to past 